What's up, everybody? This is the Poker Coaching Study Session, and today we're looking at uh, Big Blind Defense. So, I almost want to check again or bet half, probably, is an acceptable answer. How fuck is way too much. You think? I would, if I bet, I'm black, black betting, kind of. Just check, check board. We got top pair. I could see it betting half or checking. Check. Check again. Betting half. Why do you size up here? Because usually, like a weak top pair, after one round goes check, check, you have a weak top pair. That's small. Well, yeah. Um, the thing is, it check, check the flop. So low jack is going to have a lot of hands we can get value from here. So he's going to be protecting his check, jacks. His, yep. Uh, king, king. Queen, queen, we can get value from those hands. And he's going to have some spade draws that uh, he will check back sometimes. Okay. I'm mostly checking here as well, but I also like the half pot bet. Yeah, that's that's the majority of frequency. So now that we've like, what do we check, 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 check? You definitely yeah. got a value bet one street. Yeah. So three? I would not be surprised to see 7.7 7 or 4.5 or three big blinds here. I think, yeah, I think 4.5 uh, is going to be. Yeah, I'm going 4.5 as well. Yeah. As a one street value, I think it's good. I, I don't think three is bad, obviously. We're targeting weaker portions of the range. So like we were saying, um, he is protecting some King X that we can start getting value from on the turn there. Some uh, flush draws on that. Yeah. I'm betting a uh, 4.5 to target uh, all the nines and queens. Sure, it's, and it's good. So you just call. You have a weak one, not good enough to raise. Check. Uh, I'm folding. Just gonna let it go. Solver's probably indifferent. Might be calling. Um, I'm, as well. I'm just not gonna get skamazed here. What you gonna call? I'm going to call better aces. I'm going to call combo e draws. Are you calling case 10? Yeah, I will float ace 10, I think. There's I'm just not. not enough. Ace 10 is like the floor, though. I mean, and honestly, ace 10 is not that great because he's going to have like some queen 10 here that's going kind of bananas. He's going to have some 10x that's kind of floating or that's slotted into this big bet size. So. Uh, I'd be curious to see what the solver does with ace-10. I'm not sure if it likes folding it more than ace-6, maybe. Okay. Okay, maybe we can fold. No, it calls. It still calls. Hello, Roberto. Yeah. Puts us in the box. I thought we could fold because he overbets. Like, if he yeah. bets 6 or, or pop, I mean, we can always call, but overbet? No. There isn't, there is something to notice here. The EV is almost at the indifferent point, right? Like you're not losing chips folding a situation like this. Yeah. So, it's so races, no raising range as well. Yeah. It's a pretty scary bet, you know? How often does he go for that? Big and portion of the range, you. really big portion of the range. So this is another interesting thing that um, I don't know if we're seeing in a, in a practice. Yeah. Like uh, th somebody finding 34% of the range in this large, large size. Yeah. I mean, oh, I do that. Well, I mean, okay, Vince, you're the greatest. I showed you yesterday. The, you're this the greatest player spot. in the world. So we know that you find all of these spots. <laughs> but the average Joe that's in the streets. It's scary against those Joes on the health. What did he have? Queen 10? He did yeah. have Queen 10. Oh, man. I am killing this spot. <laughs> Yeah, go ahead. What do you think? I think we still call. Uh, definitely a call. We can't call. It's actually raising. Check. Um, I like a blocky size or a half size here of some sort. I mean, I would not be surprised to see it doing like 9.5, <laughs> but I think I like 5.5. I think on the Queen River, I'm checking. Yeah, maybe so. The Queen's kind of bad. It does add some value to some of his... His holdings, I guess. Uh, I think it one check check, check on the turn. We have top pair. We have to bet a little bit. So the easiest path forward is bet folding. So. I think That's I'm gonna check here because like uh, the aces that beat us, the marginal aces that beat us, uh, kind of want to check as well. So Vince, are you prepared to do what needs to be done 
Makes it when you get that when you get that big bet. Oh, are yeah. you prepared? Oh yeah. I think I think we've known each other long enough. <laughs> I have no qualms. Okay. Play it a bit safe. Just call. Uh, you can call. You can raise. Check. So he went small and now he's going big. <laughs> like, what portions of the range do this? I it's think you're still going to... Go like, ahead. Yeah, we saw the sim. His turn strategy was to blast a lot on nine turns. Nine is great for him, so... Trying to pull us off something. Yeah, I think it's, it's kind of odd though. He went like a small bet on the flop, and then he follows it up with this really polar bet on the turn. Like, do you think he can fold up there to this guy? I don't know if I'm folding here, to be honest. Like, he's going to do this with some combo he draw stuff. Like, he would bet two spades. Now he's maybe got two spades and a, a, a gut shot. Of something like he, that. he also does this with the better aces. He does. I guess he does. I mean, does Ace King really bet small on this flop at at thirty or forty? Maybe. Yeah. What do you and think he's gonna, mix, with, he's gonna hmm. mix with his best up pair? Mostly betting big, but he's gonna mix. That's, but yeah. the thing is, he's betting big here with all of his best aces and all of his bluff, and we just have to stick around. And my question is, do we fold the river? We need to make a zero EV call here. Zero EV call for over pot bet. I feel like I'm I've just like um you know uh what's the word I'm looking for? I uh leveled myself into this situation. Like uh you kind of got the right price to call now, like it's gonna be like a zero EV call, but ugh. you think we get to call triple. I'm I, I'm folding in game. I'm, I'm folding not... as well. This feels like a. This feels like two pair, with no spades. As far as our hand in the solver, I feel like this feels like a mixed call fold spot. It's gonna be calling some still. Nope, I'm wrong. Still. I mean, you gonna make point zero six EV? Like you go right ahead, sir. <laughs> I'll open the door for you, and you can walk right through. We actually have one of the bad blockers. It's kind of what I, yeah. Okay. So nine. we can call with like ace nine, ace ten. Such a six pot, I mean. Yeah, I, I think this is something you should be very cautious with implementing an actual game. I feel like you're just going to get shown better hands here the vast majority of the time. It's like uh, it's it's nice to know what the solver does here, but I don't think you're printing point zero six. Yeah, two pair plus. Feels but nice. you're calling down there if you know the guy's a maniac. No. Uh, I mean, like, if well, he has shown it, me some shenanigans. Here's he how shown... you should look at it. Okay, so the way I would do it is this is the GTO solution, right? And as we know, it's not going to be the best response against most of your opponent. So you know the GTO, you're more or less not supposed to fall here. And then you look at your opponent and you make an exploit based on what you think he is doing. If you think he's an aggressive uh, spazzer, you know you can fall down a little bit more closer to GTO. And if he's a net, well, you full turn. Yeah. I think that's pretty much it. Uh, we can't really fold the nace here at 40 big line against M at GTO, but I think even, even at GTO, it's um, zero, right? Like you're making 0 0.06 yeah. to call an overbet. Like the variance is so high that for the future game scenario, it's like not worth it at all. But Put it this way, would you ever fold a nacer against me? Yes. I never. See? <laughs> Whereas if you're playing against, uh, I don't know, uh, Joe River, you know, or Mo Delitz, or the, the, like, the passive. 
no, no, the big nets. The big net does that to you. Like, watch out. Top of if, his range, yeah. If George triple barrels you here with your eight, <laughs> uh, not, not too good. If I get a triple barrel from the Greek, I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we're going to move on. We know that we're not supposed to fold too much here. How did you deal? Ooh, under pot? Oh, yeah. 100% calling. Check call, check call, check call. It's easy. Haha. <laughs> what do you got? There you go. All right. We got it. Let's move on. Here, let's call. We're 20 big blinds deeper. Check. I think something that I ask myself a lot too is like, uh, if I'm the aggressor and you know, I'm like, is this guy good enough to fold top pair? <clears throat> yeah. So uh, this spot. <sighs> Um, we like, can't make top pair, which isn't great, but it's a very small bet. I wouldn't be surprised to see some check raising here. Dennis, yeah, please. it's it sucks, but we might have to continue. Call or raise? I don't, I don't know. I, I think four. The dice says 16. RN Jesus says 16. Well, if RN Jesus says 16, it's a call. It's a raise. It's more of a raise than a. I think it's less of a raise than anything else. I think the standard is call, so like 80 call, 20 raise. What do you say about that? I always use it as an aggression meter. Higher the number, the more aggressive the action. But, I mean, you can organize your RNG however you want. It is a majority fold, but, I mean. <laughs> it's getting close with a tiny size. Raise. So, like, yeah, I mean, you can realize theory. Like just how bad, just how bad hands are that you can still find calls and folds with, or calls, calls and raises with. And this is kind of one of those spots, the same as like last hand we were talking about adjusting to folds with population in GTO. That would be a hand class for someone who's going to under defend that you might slot in to a raise. What do you say here about this? I'm calling to close the action. I don't want a three bet and then. Get blown off eights. This hand's gonna be uh, raising with. I think it's gonna three bet some. 50 50 maybe. Okay. I'm I don't kinda, know. Pretty close seems to Maxi. No, it's, oh, it's no. a majority call, but it's it's in there a little bit. Check call. Yep, check call. No, we fold. Ooh. Yeah, I'll I'll check fold. I'm betting. You're Are you betting? No. What no. Are you doing crazy? Don't do it crazy. That's no. insane. Why not? Because you got the red triangle. The red triangle means you made a boo boo. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. That's a small bet. Yeah, but the thing is, we three bet pre flop and then we didn't see that. And then the king comes. Okay, okay. Pretty to be honest, uh, I was kind of walking around. Um, if this was a three bet pot, I'm going to just, I'm going to see bet this flop because it's an ace high. Yeah. And I'm just going to, yeah. I'm basically done. I'm basically done if I get called. Yeah. That's what I would do. I mean, it's not crazy. We check called flop. Well, it depends. That's not crazy, think... but the leading turn is, I think, pretty out of line. But, the king, whenever a king shows up and you're the three better. No, not when there's an ace on board. I mean, dude, you're, it was like two something big blinds worse than checking, a full big blind worse than calling. Or... No, you just have to understand the motion, Tim. When you play a three bet pot as the aggressor. But the motion was it loses like 100 listen, people. Listen, 100. listen, listen. <laughs> the best card for you and the deck as a three better is the king. Why is Jeremy? The, best. the second best as the three better is the ace. So if you three bet and then you get two of these cards, I mean, that's why I kind of want to go for it. But it's not, yeah, it's not I, a flop uh, where there's an ace and king on board. It's a turn with a king when you check called the flop. Like, it's just, yeah, you I just have the, no uh, range there. There's no range. I think the heuristic kind of breaks down when after you get past the turn a little bit. Like, they're going to be so condensed with ace x that. We're in the get them to fold ace x range of the tree, and uh, 
you know, I don't know if I'm going to get him to full day six with my pocket eight. Which means if you if you build a range on that turn for leading, it needs to be polarized around like a medium check ace. It needs to be polarized around like ace ten. Let's see what we got. Yeah. Now, Tim, you need, you just say for example you're playing a three bet flop. It's a low flop. The turn comes, you see bet, you get called. You're supposed to shut down, right? The turn comes a king. No, but that's a. I agree with you there you that you want to have barrel. a pretty robust range. I agree with you there that you want a pretty robust range. This is just completely no, no, different. Just, we check called and it's ace high. It's just like the key card idea applied to three bet pots. As played, what is the EV of um, donking that turn? Oh, it wasn't good. It's just I'm just trying to explain to you the motion, which you don't really. Anyway, doesn't matter. Uh, so we call. We're gonna check. I would call. Call. Check. I mean, respect. do you ever block this? I don't think you're getting better to fold. I, I just check, I think. You're not getting any better to fold, but uh, I think blocking makes it like a cheap showdown. One big blind. Yeah. <clears throat> like it eliminates their bluffs. The problem is they're going to have some King X. They're still going to call you with some 10X. It's just like, I like blocking. I just don't like doing it with eights, I think. You think he calls? You might have. You might have actually got that hand. You might have <laughs> got that hand of fold. That hurts against that hand specifically. Oof. Uh, you call here. You could check raise. We're gonna have to see. Yeah, I'm check raising this. Uh, yeah. Reasonable yeah, small, right? Right? Is that nice clicky size? Yeah, it would be clicky. Cool. I think. Why do you guys yeah, get to fold a 10 high, a jack high, a queen high? It's profit. That's what we want. Well, so would it be clicky or would it be larger because he made such a small C bet? Okay, so know. you guys both agree on check raising, but why? Well, um, we're wrapped around the seven, so there's a lot of good turn cards we can keep barreling on. We're concentrated, our range is concentrated around the 4X, which is paired. Um, typically, yep. paired boards, we're going to defend heavily by check raise. And I think this is going to slot well into that. It would be better, I think, if uh, we were suited and we had backdoor flush outs. But I agree. Much better for suited. I would kind of like to be not suited with the seven to block more of his sevens. But that's a pretty minor concern. Um, I'm going to say hands like, like this, a... hands with a six or a five in them, stuff like nine, yeah, six would be yeah. fine. You can't do it all 100% because you'll end up with way too many bluffs. But this is right. a hand class that should find here. I was going to say, if it was suited, I would imagine it's a majority check raise. But since we're off suit, I'm going to say maybe like 30 70 split. Okay. So hey, it's actually, using it's actually more of a raise than I anticipated. Like it's just pulling pretty heavily from this combo. But clicky size is good, big size is also good. Oops. Okay, um, this is bad news. I, I I get in trouble with this in game. What do you mean? You scary like, down high for defense, or yeah, like you 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 overcall the the three bet or the four bet? I no. think I get leveled here sometimes. I mean, it's a fold, but like if I had a suited eight nine here, I get in trouble here sometimes. Can I point out that what should be kind of the nice thing of having a well polarized range? Is that it makes your decisions against three bets really easy. You know, like you should know which hands in your two betting range you want to call these three bets with. Like you should know exactly right. what hands those are. The ones with fours. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think you just call. I uh, think you don't this get to is fold. A fold. I'm yeah. folding here a lot because of bad and blind odds. I make my ace and then I'm lost. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you just manage pot, keep it small. Just call. You want to call? We don't. We don't need to bluff ace high. I think it's a fold. I would be surprised. Maybe some raising in there. I would fold here. What do you do when you call? Check. I think you should lead sometimes on this turn. Yeah, maybe you should. I mean, the seven's not bad. We interact well enough with it. 
now. So I kind of like a blocky size here. You know, I like sizing up a little bit here because I think we might get ace nine to fold. Yeah, maybe. If you're going to go for it, I think six is like just enough. I like I like a big bet with non a six holdings, but since we yeah, have I ace, agree exactly since We're we have an ace, to... I'm kind of like we still get value from king jacks, the king queens of the world. Well, if you think about your range, okay, ace five is at pair, ace four is a straight, ace three, ace deuce. So ace six and ace seven are the worst ones, and they get better aces to fold. Maybe there's a bit of merit in trying. I, I kind of <laughs> like finding bluffs with four x. Like king four would be a pretty sweet bluff here. So uh, Louis, take a look at the range real quick and just see how it's kind of constructing this spot. See, it's preferring to check. So, I mean, it's probably gonna be prepared to just try to show it down. It doesn't need a yeah. block. But... As we know, we should never really turn a side into a bluff. Or right. Whatever. But I thought- so that's what's going I... on here. See, Did I call king never... four? King four is a good one. King four is a great <laughs> one actually, because you're blocking the straight, you got king high, you get aces to fold. Like it's blowing up a lot of these king X's. Um, cards that are wrapped around some of the low shenanigans here. So, like, what do you got? Six X. Five, four. Six Nine, X. Six. Mm, Looks like it's yeah, everything, I mean, right? Everything. And then, like, okay, so your nine tens and stuff, like, they get so many better hands to fold. Your jack nines. Everything they interact with. Mm -hmm. I think the important heuristic is, like, we just don't need to turn ace high into a bluff. Yeah. And, uh, to your credit, like you are going to be doing a lot of big betting here because we can make we got to make high cards fold. That's what we're that's what we're aiming to do here. We're like uh, it's going blue, right? Big blue. So eight point five. What do we get to fold a nice sometimes? Yeah, like you're targeting like the ace kings of the world. Like yeah, he's gonna have a King lot of this kind of junk. King eyes, queen eyes. Why mm. why are you over betting a lot of the nine, like king? King nine, queen nine, jack nine. So they get better those are, they, yeah. you always have to think about, you want to get better hands in your direct category to fall. So when you have jack nine, if you get jack 10 or queen 10 to fall, it's really good. Right. We're unblocking the hands that we're targeting to get to fold. Jacks and tens are basically like the worst hands you show up here with on the river because they have no pairs and they get beat by all high cards. So we're just going to lose a lot um, if we don't bluff. What do you like to do here? We're only 40 deep. Uh, I don't, and it's first an earlier position. I don't like three betting this one. I'm in equity realization mode. This is a pure call for me. Okay. What do you do with queen nine? Um, kind oh. of same story versus low same. jack, I think. I mean, but you're going to. king nine? I'm not Same. finding those, to be honest, in my verse at 40. What about I'm ace not... nine? Maybe a little ace bit. Nine, ace nine, I think I would be Actually, more fine. More. Ace nine offsuit, maybe. I think all of the suited ones, man, like they may be a little bit, but I'm just calling a lot. See, the way I structure it, it, earlier position, kind of, like I want to use ace nine suited, king nine suited against these guys. Is this wrong? I think you're going to want to flat those because you want to realize equity. Uh, see, it's more like queen nine and jack nine. So, yeah, I have okay, like... nines in my mind, you know, because he, he's opening like suit, uh, like off suit tens and like suited kind of what? Eight. So Eight. if you switch, if you change the, uh, the stack depth, the effective deck to something deeper, I think you're going to see a lot of those combos you're, you're putting in your mind you're going to see a lot more of that the problem is at 40 the general response for a four bet or he's going to have a lot of four bet jams and we just burn the equity of these strong hands which is not fun so like you're saying like now you're pulling a lot more from these and notice like the ones before you saw a lot of the offsuit branch some of these trashy aces you see how these are kind of edging in there? They're prioritizing these because versus four bit jam, it's kind of whatever. You just let them go. King nine off. Yeah. Yeah. Whereas like it, it's kind of bad to fold ace nine suited pre flop, right? Especially after committing eight nine big blinds. All right. So we need to be a little bit deeper to attack early position with these suited nines. 
No, to your your credit, like um, the Queen Nine suited and the Eight Jack Eights of the world, I'm really not finding it this deck though, and they're pretty full frequency. I mean, there's a hand like this is actually a pretty good candidate here. Yeah, twenty percent for anything. Okay. I mean, so I found another heuristic this morning, looking at my uh, tree bed aggregated reports and. The earlier the position is, yeah. the lower the board, the more you see them. Because they really are short on this area of the deck. Did you see here? Uh, Do you mean after three bit and curl the position? Well, let me show Open you again. Race. So if you look like it on this, like seven high and lower, okay? The motion is that against late position, we don't care, we range bet, but the earlier the position gets, the more we check on these low boards. Right, which is pretty interesting. And then the other motion we saw is that Jack 10 boards are bad against late position. So we have, this is where we develop our checking range. And when we are playing against earlier positions, it's more like queen high and jack high boards. So it shifts so, based on the position of your opponent and on the flop. A question, a question I'm kind of curious about is um, that I don't know off the top of my head is when these earlier positions are three bet, what are they doing with the very top of their range? Like what are their aces, kings, and queens doing? Are they always four bet jamming? Are they always flatting? Um, hang on, hang on, hang on. I mean, when I face a big blind three bet and I've got pocket queens, I'm basically just always shipping it in at this stacked up pre-flop. Like, I just don't want to take it post-flop. Kings of that same thing to a lesser degree. Sometimes I'll flat aces, whatever. And you're flatting ace king? No, I'm uh, I'm definitely ace king is a hand like I am very happy running equity with pre flop. Like, don't need to you see mean, a flop. You mean 60 big or 40 big? Uh, 40 bigs, even yeah. like 60 bigs. I'm probably gonna still raise a lot. I'm gonna look at the pre flop academy ranges while you're doing this just to get a sense of how they're organizing it. So tournaments. So verse three bet, we're gonna look at EP versus big blind. So the general response is full frequency flatting at 40 with aces. 25% uh, of the time you're flatting with kings and jamming the rest. And then it's, um. 50 50 with queens for some reason. But um, you don't really have a jamming range here outside of the very top of your range. There's no polar aspects. You don't really have bluffs. It's just. Um, that's EP. So EP2, you start to edge in some more of these polar aspects. So you see a little ace five sliding in. Some jacks are starting to four bet jam. Middle position. Okay, so now we've got some bluffs. So you got queen jack suited, some more ace five, a little ace four. Aces and kings are still flatting a lot in position. So I think that kind of contributes to a lot of this heuristic we're looking at. Um, when you're facing EP as a big blind three better, you have to be a little more protected because they have so many pocket aces and kings protecting this calling range. Okay. And as we as we approach the button, um, they still have aces and kings in these range in this range. Funny enough, it's just there's there's a lot more bluffs. So what do we do here? We just call. I think that's yeah. good. So this is a check raise hand at some frequency. I think. 
No. Well, maybe not. Maybe maybe not. Okay, so if we had the king of spades, mm -hmm. I mean, we can make top pair still. We've got backdoor flushes. We've got turn cards that'll give us open enders. No. Nope. And gut shots. No. Nope. It's too broad away here. We need more than just the king of spades. Maybe yeah. I'm reaching. So the king nine would be, and I guess that's heuristically like you're talking about the fact that it's. We, we, uh, we, we have a little bit more. We can make straights or we have more, more board interaction, right? With that. Well, the queen yeah. and the 10 is particularly condensed around his opening range, too. So it's like, yeah, okay. We're not getting a we lot. We want a tiny range. raising range there, 4% or something. Yeah, it's. It's the nature of the queen and the 10. It's just yeah. not, it's not great for us as a big blind as much as it is for him as an opener, I think. Yeah, that's a uh, Ken Teo here. Two drugs on the board are, are the way we defend our big blind changes. Yep. So we're just gonna play, uh, yeah, we're gonna play a little more defensively here now. So we do call this. Uh, we're just going to fold. You call? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think we go broke with the hand like this. Raises a little, calls a lot. Hmm, maybe Once turn. Wants to lead turn. Lead folding? Wants to know where it's at? I don't know, man. Put a oh, raise in. Solver is such a station. I feel like it's going to call it off. It's never folding a flash at 20 big lines, right? That this yeah, is exactly. Yeah. Solver is right. such a station. Even the dudes, right? It's, why is it like betting them? What, Maybe we're just the targeting ending? like uh, his two pairs. Yeah, the value. So we like. Yeah, yeah, right. You keep them for, ah, them for free. We do it with range. Yeah, there's a lot actually when the flesh comes in. We're range leading this turn. What? Well, I mean, the heuristic makes sense, right, Louis? Like, there's an equity shifting card right here. It, it's kind of like you know when a uh, a four uh, straight comes in or a middle pair of pairs. I there's think it has to do, yeah. Also has to do with the fact that Ace, the King, and the Queen is out there. I I think you're right. I think the Ace, the King, and Queen are so good for the opener, and the four flush is not necessarily great, especially when we actually have a flush. Okay. Oh. Interesting move. Yeah, it is interesting. I'm not doing this really in game. It was it was like a blocky one. Yeah. Oh right, he has no flushes. It's like basically, he yeah. have a, Ace right. He doesn't have a yeah, lot of Yeah, if you change like the queen of spades to a two of spades, are we doing it less? I'm oh, sure. That's, I'm sure. That's a really good question, Nick. Yeah, I think right, we would be it. because we're with the ace, king, and queen on the board. He has so few. No uh, more big more. sizes. Ah. Uh, the big okay, size so disappeared and it becomes 50% checking. For what the yeah. reasons Nick said. Okay. So, like the flushes he has here are. Like the majority of them are going to have high cards. So when all of, a lot of the high card combos of flushes are gone, yeah, um, it's hard. He has like two combos or something. He has like jack ten. Mm -hmm. I mean, he what? still has some that, offsuit is that stuff, off? like <laughs> king, king jack with the jack of spades, ace jack with the jack of spades. Yeah, exactly. Jack, jack ten, jack queen with the jack of spades. He's starting to draw thin with them, though, is the is the idea, yeah, I think. Yeah, exactly. And the more high cards are on the board, the less offsuit flushes he has, which means less flushes. Yeah, so he's going to have, like, a lot of two pairs and stuff. Yeah, this, this is an interesting hand, like, uh, especially that turn detail. Does the low SPR I, commit you as well? I kind of so want to yeah, bet this again. He has, he has straights all the time here and two pairs and... When you're at a low SPR and you have a hand uh, of any kind of strength like this, or uh, I'm sorry, when you just at a low, when you're like 20 or below big blinds, you're you're just not folding these types of hands. Yeah, yeah. 
it becomes a game of top pairs is kind of how it's described when you're below 40 big blinds. It's good enough, right? Um, I'm calling here a lot. Wouldn't be surprised Three, maybe to see that a little bit. Yep, yep, yep. Well, I wouldn't be surprised to see a little bit. Well, if we look at this here, uh, this is our, our three bed bluff shifts when we're against the cutoff. It's more like king seven, king eight, king nine. And I guess the button is more like king five, king six, king seven. So it's like uh, one of my favorite three bets here. We're also 60. Although this is at 40, right? Yeah. So at yeah, 60, yeah, yeah. I don't know. Probably more we'll percentage do you think at three bets? Like 20? It finds it a lot. See? Yeah, you're there a little bit. This is good even at 60. But at 60, you see where the lion's share of these three bets are coming from now. Yeah, from this. this, this suited triangle. stuff. These middling suited connectors. The triangle of doom. <laughs> I call that a second triangle. Oh, that's a big bet. I'm out, man. Yeah, I think I fold as well. You can't fold the one bet. We I'm need a spade or a draw watch with me. it. Snap it's folding. ace. It's ace high. It's yeah. two tone. I, I mean, we got we got owned. But even yeah, here, he has like fifty percent equity against us. Like we're just yeah, he's he's doing pretty good. Okay, so this yeah, is this is one we can flavor. we can raise this at a minor frequency. I wouldn't be surprised to see 30, 40. 60. Yep, there you go. Um, um yeah, I wasn't so snap check. Snap check. <laughs> I wasn't so snap checky in my mind, but I think the fact that it's queen 10 two tone um, is going to make us very polar here. So we're going to do a lot why of Why did checking. you snap check, Louie? Well, because we've been looking at this a little bit. And... You're going to see a lot of big bets and you're going to see a lot of checks. Like you... the later the position gets, the more we get uh, heavy checks with like jack eye boards and 10 eye boards. And then mm -hmm. this one is like queen 10. So it's like this portion of your ring, like you want to, you probably have like a worse ace and better aces to that. This is like yeah, the you, can, uh, the deck. you can look at the range. You're going to see like more big bets and less and more checking, I think, generally. So worse and better ones. So of. you even see like all in here. You have, um, what is that, seven combos that are just yeah. over a bet piling here. I thought yeah, we'd have more than that, honestly, on this board. Um, if you made it a jack, you would. Um, that number would probably double, at least. Yeah, but... jack high board would check. Yeah. As much as this, actually. Mm -hmm. Like ace, queen, ace, king, queens, kings, all jam a lot on jack high, I know. Yeah, jack 10-3. So like, okay, so we went from seven combos to 43 combos. So, like, the behavior, you see a lot more of this now. Louis, are you checking this endgame? I can't give up all my great secrets. <laughs> <laughs> That's a very good answer, Louis. I've seen if you came around to the dark side yet. You'll get there. So 40 big blinds. We have a trashy ace, minor frequency raising, high frequency calling. This is going to be a continue type situation. Um, do we check again? Okay, so he's got a lot of aces here. I wonder if we want to play check raise here. I I, I do I, this in game some. Yeah, I check too. check here a ton to check raise. I do too. My problem is it when check check on the flop. So why would he so, start to bet here? Because he's protecting ace king with that check check. He's protecting ace queen oh, with that no, check check. No, no, no. Ace king, ace queen are betting for value, expecting to get called by worse bases. On that flop? Yes. They're mixing. Maybe. Maybe. So they're checking a lot. Yeah, okay. There is His some range betting. is littered with aces, though. Like, it's the vast majority of his check backs. So this is why I would check this. I'm doing this a yeah. lot in game. Same. 
And he, okay, and so they, now he doesn't yeah, do that. You know what? That's what's tilting me because you, they check back the lot to you. And <laughs> yeah, then I'm just like, why? Why? So play after this okay, hand, play this. Yeah, yeah. After this hand, uh, play this note a couple times and we'll see how it de deviates. But now, like we're here, I think you just have to go big value. Spot? Like, uh, yeah. I think it's small value. See, I, I want this is what my bluffs would do. I would go big. Yeah, but uh, the, the flush came in, right? Well, we got a blocker. Hold on, I got a phone call. Well, I yeah, would the blocker's go, irrelevant. He doesn't really have suited sixes. Yeah, no, it's nine. Okay. He has a suited six. Never mind. Two point three. Mm -hmm. Check. Check. Oh. Now we race. Uh, I think we call versus the sizing. I don't know. I would always click it first. Because nice. if you click it, you get it in against like eight ten. Ace ten is, is gonna get it in against you, I think, right? Uh, ace ten. What and if you four. have seven nine offsuit? What do you do? I fold. You fold an open ended straight draw? Yeah. Look at the price. I think you can fold. Look at the price. It's an inside board now, so we overfold, and then he bets big, so we don't have the price to call for eight out. I think I fold, yeah. And this one I click. And let's see. Nice call. Either one's fine. Very nice. Very nice. Nine seven is raising, or well, it's mixing, right? Some combos with the spade, with the spade are raising a lot, and some are mixing. God. All right, sorry, we're back. So it wants to call here on the turn, which is kind of odd to me. Like, no, um, was, I... no, no, it was mixing, uh, very, very heavy raising. It was raising. Okay. It was mostly calling. It was like sixty percent call. No, this is a solution here. See a six off against a So there's blocker, card. there's blocker effects here. Um it Without pushes the spade. right. The spade actually just influences this one combo more than the other. So if you're unblocking the spades, which is unblocking as continues, we're gonna I don't basically know about this because with the ace of spade or without any spade. Actually, you're right, Louis. Um, what the what the heck's going on with that? Why is it mixing the six so much? Well, the, the, the nine of spade has the best blocker score, right? So it's the best one to have. And then, I think the six of spades isn't. It's one less spade to roll off and let his uh, bluffs get there on the river. It's not that you're blocking his flushes, but you're blocking him getting there a little bit, just a little bit. Maybe yeah. so. Yeah, pretty interesting. Um, so yeah, we play this check call. He's not gonna check off then. You're gonna bet the uh, hole. I don't know. You got second pair. You got your best second pair. I don't think you get to fold here. I agree. Never. Especially with this, maybe without the spade, we can fold a little bit. So he went really polar. Um, Definitely. The ace, the ace doesn't shift equity for the big blind, so we're still gonna check. I mean, it shifts it for a specific hand. But uh, I was just wondering, since he went so polar, if you ever, okay, you do, do donk here some. All right, that's kind of what I was trying to get at. I'm a little long-winded sometimes. That's insane. So you just jam now, I think, or you raise. Jamming's probably bad. Maybe you just raise. 20. I like the game. Uh, I jam. Jam's good. Okay. Yep, jam's in there. They're all in there. He's just going to have, like, ace-king here a lot. So it's, like, sweet. Queens, okay. Want to do it again, person. or are we good? It's up to you guys. I like this note a lot because it's a it's a fun one for me. 
Yeah, but he never checks back the, the flow, so what you're looking for is not happening. Oh, there. Oh, hello. Now you want to check. There's no yeah, way. There's no I'm way. Checking here. I'm checking here. Man. I'm checking. I'm checking here a lot. He's going to check back again. Population. Whatever. I think population is going to like over bet here because they'll be like, the ace is good for my range battle for the big blinds. I get to see yeah. that. Yeah. Nick, Nick's along with my line of thinking here. I think the same way about this, Nick. Like, I think Mr. Lojack is going to have some idea about range to range interaction. He's going to say, man, the ace is good for me. I'm just going to bluff it. Okay, so now we go bananas. Yeah, this is the same exact solution as earlier where it was betting nine. Yeah. Yeah, this seems good. Yeah, Lojack's gonna be a hot shot there sometimes and just call you with like pocket sevens or something. Like like he like he got you. Yeah. Check fold. Uh, okay. Overfolding there is probably fine. Just raise all of it. Damn. Raise all of it. <laughs> Next time I'm all in that live tournament, that's how I'm going to announce it. <laughs> I raise all of it. Call. Call. I have to. Louie can't help himself. Well, you've made your bed now sleeping it, Louie. What are you going to do? Are you going to punt your whole stack off? Sorry, investors. Of course he gets there. The fish gets there. Every time. <laughs> Oh, oh my gosh. Okay, well, good game. <laughs> now what, Louie? I'm checking. Good and game. Jamming. Oh good my game. god. You sound surprised. Yeah, fold. you can check back sometimes, maybe, this guy. You know, I bet you fold in the solver here, too. You got like a junky, junky two pair compared to like what's out there. Yeah, it's like practically bottom two. It is. King Queen beats you. Ace 10 beats you. King 10 beats you. <laughs> Louis the non believer. Louis can't help it, man. Negative 16. 16 picks. Negative Minus 16, 16 picks. <laughs> you were behind the whole time. No, on the turn. <laughs> no, the turn. The turn was oh, up here. We had the glimpse of. Uh... That's why you got a donk jam turn. Stop right, it, man. Good. Just play a call. You're you're killing me. Just Don't donk do jam. It. Donk jam turn. Donk jam. Oh my god. You you played it the exact same way and you're surprised you ended up in this note again. <laughs> the only thing you didn't do was punt it off on the river. Why does, he not, why does he always have a jack? <laughs> what is wrong with this? Just call, please, for the love. Well, this is an example of old, old habits dying hard, everyone. <laughs> well, I'm going to check turn this time. All of it. No. Okay. Oh, we got him this time. Oh. <laughs> oh, no. All right, let's call. Thank you. Thank you. Let's play check call, small ball. No need to go broke here. Just call. Check. Call. No. Yes. Why? I agree. I think it's a call. It's a big polar bet, man. You got middle two. You got our bottom two, effectively. See if it has what it thinks. All right, put him to the test. I'm calling in game. I don't oh. like raising. Yeah. What did, what did Queen 10 do to you, Louis? The nuts. 
What did Queen Tim do to you along the way? Too bare. What do you want? You don't. You get like every hand that's worse than yours to fold, and every hand that's better than yours to call. Oh, that's right. blink poker. Blink twice if you need help, Louis. <laughs> Cough once. Do the just one time emoji if you folded aces. This feels so much better. Like, look, there's 22 big blinds. We still have some tournament left, and we won. It's great. Don't do it. Thank you. Uh, I was wondering if I ever lead when he bets that small. We dunk for sure. Way to go. Check, check, turn. I, I zoned out for two seconds. Yeah. Yeah, you can block uh, this. So check. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know sizing. Oh, we call. call. Too big, I thought. Never on the felt. I don't think so. That they're bluffing so cool. Clearly, you didn't play the Venom with me. <laughs> um, I'm not talking about you guys. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. Next hand, let's find a good one. Too good of a. You can jam this, I think. You're 20. All of it. Call. Check call. Do check, check raise. raise. Do we ever check raise? Do we ever check raise? It's a good question. Not against I'm this, but I'm calling this in game um, personally just because we, we're kind of interacting with the bottom end of it, I think. I like, think we still raise a little bit. Maybe. It does. It does oh, a little bit. It's in there. Raising to a little bit, yeah. I think it's because we have interaction that we get to raise still. I don't think uh, other bottom pairs are really going to raise much. Right. I like folding there too. Yeah. Just a house. Just a house. Uh, cool. We call. There's under the gun one. Slop a set. Never lucky. Check. Call versus. That's like close. It's kind oh. of a big bet. Kind of a big bet, mm. but He's we got two here. The so queen I bore not so bad for us. Yeah, I it's think such a dry board. Nope. Yeah. Oh, nope, 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 nope. Too bad, too big. The three point three is too much. Oh, that's right. But the six yeah. was coming. Six Another was the position. Um. Yeah. Old. We're just calling. Uh, oh, it's twenty. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Check. You don't need a block. I think you check, maybe. Too good to bluff. Kind of where I'm at with it, too. The, the heart kind of makes me want to bluff a little bit, though. Like, we can set ourselves up for some good river plays, but that's, yeah, check. I'm reaching. Oh. Uh, you could probably you raise a. No, nope, never mind. Uh, this is pretty close. This is just a call. Never mind. Don't listen. It's just a call. Okay. Nope. It is close. It is close. It yeah. is close. Under the gun. 60. 60. Offsuit aces and offsuit kings are garbo. Uh, minor frequency raising, I think. Majority calling. 15% raise. Oh, more. See, I've been trying to find more of these little... Uh, offsuit a6 that are right next to the king x mm -hmm. so this little area i like it so
So we three bet. We got to see bet this board, I think, especially with the ace of spades. I would like to see that, but I'm going to check. Half pot. Uh, I'm okay with a third or a quarter, to be honest. Okay, so as much as I want to check, because, like, as my little graph shown here, like 10 eye boards want to check a lot against the button and three bet pots, right? This I think is, the ace of spades is too valuable yeah. here. Yeah, okay. Yeah. It would be ace of spades. It's a check. It goes 10. It goes 10. Or it checks a lot. Yeah, it's a check. It is a check. 10 high, too, uh, too scary. Check That's again. Small. No, I would small. be now. Yeah, maybe so. Maybe uh, oh, bet big. Bet big. Hey. Half. 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 Boom. Does do a lot of checking, though, to be fair. Yeah. yeah. So this is like the emotion we we're talking with Tim at the beginning. Uh, when uh, you're in a three bet pot and then one of your 2K card comes like that, you sometimes we turn. Um, 40 bigs, you're going to want to call this combo. Here, call. Check. Pure fold. Yeah, it is. It is a pure fold. Um, low Raise frequency. 15%. Low frequency. Yeah, I think Nick's about right. 10. 10, yeah. What, what are our aces are raising? More frequency here. I mean, from the garbage. It's seven, it's six, it's five. You're right. Yeah, the, the seven's kind of a low point. So you're going to see the frequency go up as it goes a little higher and up as it goes a little lower, is what I thought. So you see a little ace five. Okay. But then it's like the eights and the nines. Yeah. Check. Yeah, check is good. Call. Raise. Not finding that. Well, why does it? We we want three bet and we. I mean, how often do we check, right? It doesn't. Make oh, sense. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I forgot it was a. Um, yeah. I forgot it was a three bet pot. You need to see that. I did as well. Me too. This I'm, is spicy, man. I don't know if I'll find that one. I'm not. It, honestly, it's a weird note I haven't studied. Like this three bet check check raise line. Like if somebody pulled that out on me in like in game, I don't know what I would. Uh, I'd probably just fold because I don't know what to do first. <laughs> 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 I just, I'd put just a, jam because so, I don't know what to do first. Yeah, I'd put a so confused emoji and just fold. Uh, call. Hmm. Well, I don't like. Okay, okay, maybe some raising. We're fifty deep. Uh, I think it's the raising is more suited nines, though, right? Yeah, like it's, it's like the yeah. raising is like queen nine, jack nine. It's above yeah. the triangle. It's too good. Yeah, king ten is just too premium too of a hand. See, it's so close. Queen ten. You can't. Is you couldn't stomach the possibility of having to fold this lovely hand preflop. Yeah, it's not crazy. It's not like it's torching, but you have better options. Pretty good hand, maybe raise. check raise. How often? Uh, I just want to call. I don't think we have much of a raising range here. I don't know. Right, right, give me your check raising frequency. There you go. Five percent, maybe five. Uh, somewhere. Four. Too low, somewhere. I think. You, you mean range wise or only this hand? No, this hand. Oh, this oh. hand. Sorry, that was eighty percent. Eighty percent. Yeah, I'm also very, very high frequency raising. Here. I'm a 50 50 guy personally. I'm like 30% against this sizing. I'm 100% raising. If he bets small, if he bets smaller, I'm 100% raising. Yeah, 50. That makes it, it's just a bigger 30%. bet. Yeah. And how about a 30? I'm right on the money. A range frequency? It'll be quite Probably a bit. Like 10? Nope, it's not quite a bit. Around 10%. It's a lot of folding is what it really is. So it's funny how King Nine raises more than King Ten. 
if I you think, make your uh, sizing smaller, I bet we're like pure raising all that stuff. You know what I think that is? I think you're unblocking some of his open enders and you're blocking his outs. Can so we like... change Jack to some random card? Are we getting more raises with our hand? Let's say five. Well, no, I think it's the same pattern as usual. Like you see from the worst kickers are, are more like calling and the best kickers are like raising pure. So it's sure. just like the property of the king 10 precisely. We have the suited one, yeah? Yeah. We do have the suited one, yeah. Yeah. But if you structure a range that you check raise from king queen to king seven, I think that's going to be very good. It's it's the ten specifically on this exact board texture because of how it interacts with his continues that we're ahead of. Yeah. Um, I'm big. I'm big town here. Like ten big blinds. Nope, nope. even bigger. Two big spot. It looks so bluffy, right? It does. Yeah. What kind of maniac does 2x pot there? Call. You're going to raise? Don't do it. You're torching. No. <laughs> All right. Thanks a lot for watching, everybody.